Hello, I thought in this video I'd show you a little bit about the History Connector. So it'll be a very quick video, but I've got some interesting things here. For example, I've got the model under Rhapsody Model Manager. Uh, you can see I've got outgoing changes. So what I'm going to do first is basically make sure that I've got everything checked in. So let me check in this to the change set and then I'll, I'll just deliver my changes. So I've got an outgoing change here and then I'll just baseline the model. So a quick baseline here to say this is uh, ready for demo. Uh, this particular model is associated with requirements and those requirements are coming from DAWs next generation. So if I go back to Rhapsody here, you can see actually I'm doing a stopwatch model um, if I navigate to the original tool, this is essentially a requirement in Doors NG. And this is it highlighted here. And you see I've got traceability between the model and Rhapsody. And if I show this in Rhapsody, I can uh, get Rhapsody to highlight the element. It's actually highlighted in the browser. Of course, I could locate on diagrams. Um, for example, a state diagram. This is the uh, state machine for the timer class. And you can see here there is a long press event that causes it to reset. So let's just generate, make and run this application. And this is the application running. I'll minimize that window and we're just back animating Rhapsody here. So I've got an animated sequence diagram. I can generate, make, run and I can, uh, if I look at the lifeline for the button, look, open its animated state chart, I can just do a press and release. We can see actually uh, the timer is now ticking. It's actually sending a change event via that uh, flow port here. If I press, but I take a long time to release. Let me do that again. Press. See, let me just activate the on off switch. Okay, so um, I've essentially generated this long press and we can see the long press has caused a reset. So um, let's look at the animated state chart, the timer here. So history. So if I um, change the behavior here, so at the moment, if there's a long press, essentially I go into the not time and state. And suppose that I say, this, this is equivalent actually to me exiting the running state and re-entering, apart from reset here, it's gonna be called twice, uh, which is a bit unfortunate, but I'll, I'll build it anyway and just show the behavior if I exit and re-enter the state. So um, not in the not timing state. This is my, uh, I've done, called the reset. Essentially I can do a, let's enable this functionality, press. And then if I don't press release, it's gonna take this transition. This causes it to reset. So actually here you can see the reset being called twice. Now suppose, suppose I want to reset, uh, let me just take these two buttons. I'll do a copy and I'll paste it here. Let's run again. So short press, take that short press event, starts timing. Uh, if I press, but don't release, then I get a long press that causes me to reset. Now, suppose that I want to go back into timing. Um, in fact, let's just quickly add uh, another control here. So add new control. Um, I'll add a quick matrix display. Let's get the time, the seconds time shown here. So I'll bind this to the composite structure timer 
seconds attribute. Let's change the display options just so that it's showing the bound element. So I'll make it clearer. So let's run again. So let's enable this by default. Make it easier. So um, generate make run, build in the application. That's going to launch the application in the command window. Let's minimize that. And now I'm running. So a short press causes it to go into a time and stay. It starts ticking. If I press but I don't release, then after two seconds, it takes the not timing transition. Suppose I want to effectively hold and release, but go back into the timing state. Well, um, I can use something called a history connector. And uh, this is the this is the UML terminology. And so it says, well, I re-enter this state. If there is history, go into the state I was in. Um, let me just generate, make run that. Um, this isn't going to work, which is which is what I want to emphasize in kind of my tip, really. <laughs> Essentially, short press starts timing. Press, but don't release. Actually takes the not timing interval. So the way I use a history connector when I'm doing cogeneration is very important in Rhapsody. Firstly, my default connector needs to go to the history and say that Effectively, this says initialize the history so that um, the not timing state is the default. And then going forward, Rhapsody will remember the history. Uh, so let's just generate, make run that. Okay, so that was the initialization sequence. So you can see the history was initialized. Press quick release causes the timing state start timing. If I press but I don't release, it accesses the timing state, goes back in and resets. So it's still ticking. Short press again, that causes me to go into the not timing state. If I press but I don't release, then it resets. So the key thing here is draw, put a history connector. If you want to remember the state you're in when you re-enter, put a history connector into that region. Secondly, draw the initial state to the history connector and draw a connector from the history connector to the where the initial state should be. And in this way, the code generation will uh, initialize the history connector and it will execute as you expect. So I hope that helped. Very quick thing here. Obviously, um, I, I can start to show traceability to requirements in here as well. So this is a quite an interesting example. Thank you. Cheers.